Hi, I'm Andrew Malkov. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and configure uh, Builder and Podman on your favorite Linux distribution. In my case, I will use uh, the Ubuntu 20.04 installed on Windows 10 using the Windows subsystem for Linux 2. If you are looking for how to install Ubuntu on Windows 10, please check out my video on this link. And please subscribe to my channel to not miss my next videos about the Builder, Podman and Docker. All right, let's start. The first thing that I'm going to show you is where you can find all the detailed instructions how to install Builder on your Linux distribution. I open the browser and I go to Builder.io website. This is the official website of Builder. Then you are going to install and here you can find all the detailed instructions for Amazon Linux 2, for example, for Arc Linux, for CentOS, for Debian, Fedora, Gento, OpenSUSE, SUSE Cubic, and etc. In my case, I will use the detailed instructions for Ubuntu. So I'm closing the browser. So to start the installation process of Builder, I open my Windows terminal. By the way, this is the great tool and I really suggest you to install it on Windows if you don't have it yet. And I will open my Ubuntu terminal. I click on Ubuntu and here it is. I will clear screen. I will open my terminal to the full screen and zoom in a little bit to let you see more. So the, the first thing that you need to know if you are using Ubuntu 2010 or later, then you can easily type the command sudo apt get install builder. And that's my lead. But in my case, because I'm using 2004, so it's one version before 2010, I need to do it a little bit differently and use the Kubic repo to get Builder. So I just copy all of these commands. By the way, I will put, of course, those commands inside the description to this video. So you can all also just copy paste it from, from description. I click Ctrl C and I'm going to paste those commands to my terminal. And the last command, I just click Enter. And that's my lead. So I clear the screen. And to see that Builder actually works for us, I can run some commands like Builder images just to see what images we have. And as you can see, the command runs successfully. So I can try to pull an image and I do build a pool Alpine. And it asks me from what container registry I want to pull my image. I can say Docker and it's actually done. So right now, if I execute the same command build the images, then I will see that I have the Alpine image on my local cache. So actually, it's a proof that Builder works fine. So I clear my screen. And the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to install Podman. But again, before I install the Podman, I just want to show you where you can find all the instructions how to install on your Linux distribution. And to show this, I'm going uh, again to the browser and I type podman.io. And here I select get started in the menu and then the installation instructions. And again, almost the same things. So you can see how to install it on Mac OS, how to install it on Windows and on multiple Linux distributions. Yeah, For me, I'm going to scroll to see Ubuntu, but in your case, it could be, it could be different. You can even install it on Raspberry Pi. Yeah. So again, for me, this is the Ubuntu section, but I just close my browser because I already copied the, the script. I open my OneNote 
But again, I will put, of course, the script in the description to this video. So you can just copy paste from there. I copy it and I paste to my terminal. Paste anyway. And after a couple of minutes, it's done. So again, I clear the screen. And to check that the podman installed and worked correctly, I will run a command podman ps, just to see what containers we are running. And as you can see, we have no containers. So to run a container, uh, I will execute the command podman run hyphen IT, I want to have the interaction session with the container, and I say Alpine. And the command that I want to run is shell. I click enter, and now we see that we are in the shell. So we can do ls, for example. And as you can see, it's completely different from what we have in our Ubuntu machine. So we are definitely inside the container. So I, I type exit, and again, to prove that, if I type ls here, so as you can see, it's completely different file system. So we, we was inside the container. And also, if we type podman ps minus a now, because the container should be stopped, as you can see, the status is exited. So we can see our container that was run previously from the Alpine image. Yeah. And the command that we run, it's a shell. The only one thing that I want to configure for my podman is because I'm running my podman on Windows 10 using the WSL2. So if you run it on real Linux machine, then you don't need to do this. Yeah, you will not be seeing this kind of errors. Yeah, those errors are related to WSL2 because actually in WSL2 we have no uh, journal D and, and the system D installed. The WSL2 is a little bit unique environment. Yeah. To solve those problems, to not see these errors again and again and again, because actually it will be there uh, when you will start the containers, when you will stop the containers and etc. You will always see those kind of errors on WSL2. The first thing that I can do, for example, I can include some additional flags to each of my commands. Yeah, and uh, for example, let's see how to do this. Uh, so I just type cgroup manager equals cgroup fs so supported values for cgroup manager it's a cgroup fs or systemd the default is systemd but again because the wsl2 is kind of unique environment and we don't have the systemd so that's why i switch to cgroup fs and then uh, the next flag that i need to specify it's events backend equals file Events backend by default use the uh, journal D, which we don't have on WSL. So that's why we are we are saying that we want to use a file. Uh, and in this case, all the events will be stored under the subdirectory of the tempdir folder. And if I execute it right now, I click enter. As you can see, I have no these errors anymore. And again, I can type a less, for example, to see that we are exactly inside the container. Yeah. So this is the same command with just a few additional flags to just prevent the errors happened. So I'm exited from the container. But of course, typing those flags again and again and again for each command, it's a yeah, time consuming, first of all, and then it's a kind of boring procedure. So I want to change my con global configuration for my podman to just include those flags for all the commands. And to do this, I first clear the screen. To modify the configuration file, I have to go to the folder where Podman stores it. So I type cd usr share containers. And I click enter. Right now, if I execute the ls command, I see that this folder has the file containers.conf, which I need to change. To modify this file, I need to run my text editor, which is nano in my case, but I also need to be a super user to be able to save it to, in this location. So I type sudo nano and then containers conf. I click enter and it asks me for a password for sudo for the super user. 
and I type my password. Wrong. I type it again. And the Nana is open. The file is quite big, so I don't want to scroll it uh, manually. So I want to use the find feature of the text editor. Yeah. And to do this, I need to click Ctrl W, as you can see, where is. This is the command, where is. I click Ctrl W and I type C group M. It's enough to identify my C group manager configuration. So I uncomment this configuration, and as you can see, we have valid option system D or C group FS. And I type it instead of system D. The second thing that we need to change, we need to change the event logger. Again, I click Ctrl W and I type events underscore and I click enter. And I see the events logger. I uncomment it again. And as you can see here, the valid values is journal D or file. Yeah. And I, and I change the journal D to the file. And that's it. I just need to click Ctrl X to exit. Control X and it say it asks me if I want to save this file. Of course, I want to save. I click uh, Y and then it asks me for the file name and I want to keep the file names the same. So I just click enter and the file is saved and we can actually try how the podman will behave right now. So I execute the same command podman run minus it alpine shell command. And I click enter now. And as you can see, I have no errors anymore. I can type less just to prove that I'm inside the container. I can type exit. So everything is working perfectly now. I have installed and configured Builder and Podman and everything is ready to start using these amazing tools. Again, I want to remind you, please subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss my videos about these tools as well as Docker. Thank you for watching. And see you next time.